Good morning, Harvard United Church of Christ. Greetings in the Lord. Today, we hear the words from the first chapter of the Gospel of John, which is one of my favorite passages. This passage is often read on Christmas as it speaks of the coming of Christ, the coming of light into the world. And I'd like to read the first few verses again because I think they are so powerful. Starting with verse one. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. This light, life itself, we know to be Christ. And while darkness seems to loom large these days in various ways, John reminds us that light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot and will not overcome it. I have the privilege of serving as a hospital and hospice chaplain. And in this work, I walk alongside folks who are often experiencing abundant darkness and despair. My role is to come alongside folks, um, process feelings, process what they're thinking about illness, death, grief, challenging things, um, and to, to just be with people in that. Sometimes that looks like um, talking about life memories. Sometimes it looks like sharing music that connects to our core beliefs. Sometimes it looks like praying and reading scripture. This looks like a variety of things. And whether it be terminal illness, tragic loss, long roads to recovery, or death of loved ones, people experience immense pain and suffering every day. I'm sure all of you have experienced or may know someone who has experienced these things. The darkness of pain tries to blind us, filling our hearts with fear, hopelessness, and doubt. But as this text reminds us, and as it is our responsibility to remind each other, light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. People often think that as a chaplain, I am the one who brings hope. I'm supposed to be the one who tells people what to believe in these moments, or how to think about pain, or brings the perfect verses from the Bible. And while, of course, I hope to foster hope, and encourage people in the midst of pain, and I love reading scripture with people and praying. More often than not, I find myself humbled and amazed by the hope that I witness in others, in those experiencing pain themselves. As a chaplain, one of my core phrases I think of when visiting folks, um, it says, visiting Christ, visiting the sick, and visiting ourselves. I think of the passage in Matthew 25, 36, when Jesus says, I was sick and you visited me. Christ is present simultaneously as the one suffering, the one visiting, and the one healing. When we spend time with each other, when going through these things, Christ is present with us. God is present in the midst of our pain and our wounds. As I sit and listen with folks, I hear people who are physically dying often becoming more spiritually alive. People often reflect on their childhoods and remember the most important relationships in their life. They speak about the love of their family and friends, all loved ones, and how that's more important than any accomplishment they may have perceived themselves to have. They think about works that have contributed to society and benefited people and sometimes people share regret about ways that they have hurt people. And in this reflection, people often say to me that God is with them now and that God has always been with them. That looking back on their lives, looking back on different moments, they see that God got them through. I think of the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness, as people share these memories. That morning by morning, new mercies came with the Lord. As they proclaim hope to me, that even in the darkest moments, even when they felt all alone, 
they can look back now and say, God was there. They may not have felt that in that moment, but they can see now that God never left them. That even in these moments when it felt like darkness won, when they were crying out to God asking why, even then, God was with them and ever shall be, and that God is with them now. That light shines in the darkness, and the darkness could not and will not overcome it. Our passage from Isaiah today proclaims how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. And our passage in John goes on to speak of John the Baptist, who came as a witness to testify to the light so that all may believe. These beautiful words remind me of the people I serve who witness to God's presence in the midst of pain. You may have people in your life who have witnessed to God's presence in times when it is hard to believe that to be true. John declares that Christ is the embodiment of God's divine illumination, a beacon of hope and truth in a dark world. Jesus came to earth as the Word made flesh, the Word incarnate, revealing the very nature and character of God to humanity. To humanity. Through his life, teachings, miracles, death, and resurrection, Christ shows us what it means to live, to love, as followers of Jesus, we are called to embrace and reflect his light in a world desperate for illumination. We are to live as children of the light, allowing the transformative power of Christ to shine through us. We must resist the pull of darkness and allow God's truth, love, and righteousness to guide our thoughts, words, and actions. By living as children of the light, as beacons of the light, we can make a profound impact on those around us, leading them and encouraging them in the true source of illumination, Christ himself. This passage from John fills me with hope and confidence, and I hope it fills you with hope as well, because no matter how dark the darkness may seem, no matter how deep the pit of despair may feel, the light of Christ always prevails. We can find solace and strength in knowing that his light dispels our fear, will relieve our pain, and offers freedom. I often think about um, a song that I sang as a child, and I wonder if you sang too as a child. Um, one of my favorites, This Little Light of Mine. And we encourage children to sing, let your light shine, this little light of mine, let it shine. And we know this light to be Christ within us. Within children, we can often see with more joy and encouragement. Um, but I encourage you today to think about that light of Christ present within you, as he always is, even when it may not feel that way. Um, and our closing prayer for today is to sing um, the chorus of this little light of mine. So I invite you to join me in singing some of one of my favorite tunes. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. As you go forth from this place on this day, and as you move about during your week, I encourage you to remember the song from childhood, a, a song that is just sweet to my heart. Um, and that is true always, that Christ, light, life himself, shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot and will not overcome it. Amen.